So in today's video, I want to show you how radiologists can use OpenAI's ChatGPT in their daily practice, what it might offer and how we can make our life easier working as a radiologist. And if you haven't heard about ChatGPT so far, just a very brief summary, it's basically a artificial intelligence powered chatbot. So a computer system that has the functionality to provide human-like answers to any questions that you enter it. So we will have a look at some examples here. Um, so let's dive in. Hi, and welcome to ChatGPT. This is now the interface where we can start entering our questions. And it's very easy. So you just write a question and you get an answer. Just one limitation here that I want to point out. It has limited knowledge of the world after 2021 because it was trained with text that originated earlier than this date. So let's uh, start with some random question uh, that you might find not so easy or quickly on the internet. So let's see, why did William Conrad Röntgen die? So he discovered the x-rays. So let's see what the computer is saying. Okay, so he died of natural causes here. Very interesting. So this is how you can use this. And you can also ask follow-up questions. And the system, because it's a chatbot, it knows what you are referring to because the question was he married he computer has to know that i'm talking about dr william or william conrad röntgen and yes he was married to annabetta ludwig röntgen so that's something you would not easily find on uh, wikipedia in the same speed so i think there is certainly some value behind the whole thing but let's try something else here so what are signs of malignant transformation of an osteochondroma on mri let's see so it's giving us a list the increase in size of the lesion change in shape and contour, aggressive margin, invasion surrounding tissue, evidence of bone destruction, replacement by a malignant neoplasm. Okay, that's not very helpful. Presence of fluid-filled cavity within the lesion, associated increase in vascular disease on dynamic contrast studies. That sounds more like generic. I don't think that's a good response. Let's ask it, what about the cartilage cap thickness? Okay. Yeah, this is now a good example why we should not trust something like this without any references, etc. So this is completely wrong. The thickness of the cartilage cap, cap is considered to be a significant factor for the risk of malignant transformation of osteochondroma. Well, that's correct. But a thinning or absence of the cartilage cap on MRI can be a sign of malignant transformation is completely wrong. It's exactly the opposite. Also, typically a cartilage cap thickness of less than 2 mm is considered a possible indicator for malignant change. Also completely wrong. We are more looking at the 10 to 15 mm range. However, the presence of a thick cartilage cap does not rule out malignancy. So we don't know where this information is coming from. So let's phrase it differently. So let's see what the chat GPT is coming up with this time. Similar question, a little bit differently uh, phrased. Wow still wrong okay so this is still the same answer it goes with the two millimeters i had played around with this previously and i think i just go through one of my previous uh, discussions with the ai here let me just find it okay so here i was asking it i think earlier today what thickness of cartilage cap is concerning again we are talking about osteochondromas and it's a non-specific factor for concern but can be used with other stuff that's okay typically so it gives a summary about what osteochondromas are, typically less than five millimeter cartilage cap. And if it becomes thickened, this can become a sign of malignant transformation of the osteochondroma. Now this is actually correct. And the cartilage cap that is more than 10 millimeter thick is generally considered a sign of increased risk for malignancy. There are also some values in the literature that go with 15 millimeters. So just uh, something here without any references, etc. I don't think this is a good way to use it. So we should be careful when we use OpenAI for stuff like this, because the literature is not just always black and white and we should not rely on something like this. So we can see there are certainly some applications if we just need factual knowledge that is like kind of like black and white, then it might work to get some information, but we should be always very careful with things like this if we try to use it in our daily practice as radiologists to get information because it's unfiltered, it might be completely wrong because it just got some random information from some internet pages. So yeah, be very careful. So, but what I want to show you next is something very interesting. But before we do, just remember to give the video a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps me out in the long run. And yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. But now let's have a look on what we might come up with in the future, how to use chatbots like this 
once the systems would be a little bit more developed. And this is an idea that I had and I want to show you this right now. Okay, so now let's see how we could exploit a system like this if it should be really good. Now we see here, this is a knee trauma case and let's go just through the most important findings here very quickly, just to give you an idea. Okay, we have a full, like a complete ACL tear here. When we go to the middle side, there's not much happening on the middle side, ACL tear. Then we see a complex tear here of the posterior horn and root of the lateral meniscus. Then we see the typical bone bruising of the pivot shift injury with the contusion and here the bone bruising on the posterior lateral tibia plateau. We see some cartilage defects here um, and some edema there. Then let's see on the coronals maybe. So we can see brain of the a strain of the biceps femoris muscle. Then some edema just around the knee joint. So we don't have to go into too much detail so we can also maybe go here sagittal again axial again baker cyst some edema in the popliteal fossa again the muscle edema in the biceps femoris better seen here so what i would imagine now you get the findings you have an idea and now instead of writing and dictating a full report we would then go to openai open AI and ask the chatbot to, to develop the report for us and populate it so let's go here on this ChatGPT interface and now let's tell the chatbot what we want. Now we're asking the chatbot to write us a comprehensive MRI report with the major findings that we just saw. So let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it's generating this report now. Patient John Doe findings. Okay. Anterior cruciate ligament tear complete tear is identified, indicating a disrupted stability of the knee joint. Lateral meniscus tear complex, posterior horn root tear of the lateral meniscus is seen, which could lead to pain, swelling, instability of the joint, bone bruise. Typical bone bruise pattern is noted, constant pure shift injury, biceps and muscle strain. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, this looks not too bad. Um, obviously, it was just repeating what I said, and then it provides some additional information about these injury types. I mean, it might reduce, uh, induce knee pain and swelling. That's not something uh, surprising. So very interesting, ACL tear, lateral meniscus tear, bone bruising of the pivot shift injury, biceps femoris tear. So it's not going through all the other stuff that we didn't have in our report, or which are normal. It's not mentioning the normal stuff. Um, and the above findings are consistent with a knee injury secondary to a pivot shift mechanism, sustained complete. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Um, so I think it's quite interesting. And uh, maybe let's regenerate the response and see whether that's working or not. Okay. Now it's making something different. Chronic, <laughs> chronic tear. Okay, that's complete, uh, made up, completely made up. Okay. Yeah, so it's just does the same. It brings some random information as well. But I think, you know, once the AI would be better or maybe even trained with a lot of radiology, radiology reports may be connected with the images. I think at some point we might just call uh, or, or do or work like this and we don't have to dictate everything we, we need. So I think in summary we can say the ChatGPT tool is quite still impressive. I mean, just to ask any questions, it finds information quickly. It's a different way of searching for information and that's why there is this whole debate whether something like this might change the way we search in the internet in the future. And it certainly will have impact, so there's no doubt there. But in radiology, it doesn't really have like a really hard day-to-day -day, you know, application at the moment. Uh, it was not trained for these purposes, to be fair. But I think we will see similar stuff coming out uh, soon. And yeah, I think the connection between images and reports at some point will really speed things up. Obviously, for the moment, we can't really use it. I think that's uh, clear with the cartilage cap. It just provides wrong and false information that we cannot even approve. So we should still rely on original research done by humans and good uh, resources, articles, review articles in peer-reviewed journals to uh, use for to discuss things with patients, with colleagues, etc. Yeah, so thanks for watching and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye guys.